Welcome to the fourth video for the YamahaSynth.com programming article series, Manny's FM Expert Examples. In the fourth article, we talked about envelopes and how in our harmonic component modeled piano, it's very important to get the attack transients just right and how we're going to use the hold parameter of the envelopes to sort of get the feel of the inertia where it takes just a couple of milliseconds before uh, the various thunks and harmonics come into our sound to better replicate the feel and connection to playing our piano sound. In the article, I talked about this piano example one sound and specifically uh, parts seven and eight that are being used to uh, create the key thunk and uh, attack transients across the keyboard. Um, I have them here in isolation. And what I want to go over is show how we've got these envelopes set up where we've got the hold time and the attack time set to values to basically delay the onset of the sound because the envelopes in FM are so fast. So as I step through the carrier operators here, um, you can see our operator eight, we've got 11 and 13 for attack and hold. Operator four, we've got a hold of 11 and an attack of five. And operator two, we have a hold of uh, 10 and an attack of two. And these guys contribute both the uh, thunk noise of the mechanism and the initial brightness and the high velocity attacks. So I'm going to mute ops one through four. We're just going to go back to this uh, eight through five stack, which is the uh, noise sound. Turn that up a little bit for you. And you're going to see how the character of it really changes as we mess around with these two parameters. I'm going to take the uh, carry op down to a zero so there's no hold. And you can see at extreme values there, it really has a noticeable delay. So let's set it back to its original value of 13. Now you'll see I've also got hold times on the uh, modulators as well. So you can see how we can change the character of the sound as well by changing the hold time here on op seven. So this is changing the delay of how the harmonic components come in as opposed to the volume. Remember the carrier controls the volume of our sound. Uh, by its envelope, and the modulator's envelope controls the time evolution of the harmonics. Here's uh, op six. So let's go over to part eight, and its component to the sound is this. So it's both more thunk and some of the uh, very high harmonic content in the hammer attack. And you'll see our envelopes, our carrier op 8 has a value of 7 and 17. It's modulator, 11 and 7. The next carrier, op 6, has a hold of 8, an attack of 3, and it's modulator, 5 and 5. Our next carrier, op 4, hold of 8, attack of 5, and it's modulator, 3 and 2. And our final carrier, op 2, hold of 7, attack of 3, and it's modulator, 9 and 2. So we're going to listen to these uh, operator stacks in isolation to see how the interaction of these parameters changing change the character of the transient and the feel. So I'm going to start with our ops 7 and 8 pair. And in isolation, these two uh, operators make this part of the sound. So I'm going to increase the uh, hold time here so we can hear what happens when we do this for the modulator. Again, the original sound. So you can see I've got pretty extreme here, and it's a total flam. Almost sounds like a, a double hammer attack kind of thing. The original. Now in addition, we can change that feel and the uh, peaks in the uh, harmonics by doing the attack time as well. So let's change that.
Now, now you can hear it's getting to be a very, very soft type of sound compared to the original. In addition, for this modulator, I'm actually using our Decay 1 as another attack control because I've got my attack level below my Decay 1 level. So we actually have two stages to shape that. So let's mess around with this one. So you can hear changing that also will soften it up. Let's go to our uh, Op 5 and 6 stack here. And these two are contributing this part of the sound. And we're going to play it together with the first two, 7 and 8. So now let's start changing the hold time for uh, the carrier op number 6 while we're playing and hear how that changes the alignment of these components with the thunk of uh, 7 and 8. Again, because that's being so delayed, you're starting to hear it's no longer like a single event aligning. It's got that little flam in it. And I'm turning it down to zero. And now we've sort of reversed it. Now that high harmonic comes in before the hammer. So it's sort of flaming in the reverse direction. And in eight, it all lines up. Going to our three and four stack. It sounds like this. So here's five, six, and three and four together. And again, we're going to change four relative to six. You'll see their starts are the same. And here's our ops one and two. So the uh, metallic components all together. And as you mess these around with the hold time. Everything together. Now I'm going to put the zero, all our metallic parts, leave the thunk, that's original seven. And you can really hear the flaming. So now you can hear the time alignment's all off and it doesn't have the right character. If we turn this guy down to zero, they're aligning better. We bring the attack time down. We've brought them into alignment, but now it sounds more like a pop than a hammer hit. And if you play the whole sound, Now it's way too crisp and it doesn't uh, sound with the right feel. Let's go to the uh, edit compare to hear the original. And then this one. It's far too brittle and actually feels too quick when you play it from the keyboard. Might be a little bit hard to hear in the video example, but if you edit this on your montage, it becomes very, very apparent as you're playing. In the article, I mentioned the issues that arise with the time key parameter, which shortens our envelopes as they go up and down the keyboard on how they interact with our hold and attack time settings where we have to be aware of how we're going to keep our attack transients uh, constant or with the feel correct as the uh, decay and sustain characteristics of the piano get shorter as we play up the register here. Since I mentioned the time key parameter uh, affects only the time segments of the envelope but not the hold time, um, it can create some issues as you go up and down as our envelopes speed up uh, those transients may occur too soon, um, and they may slow down and occur too late as we go down the keyboard. So we have to balance how we set the hold and attack time so we have a consistent character. This example voice I've set up is just using a square wave, um, so you can more easily hear the phenomenon what's going on. So our operator 2 carrier, we've got uh, no time key scaling, we've got a hold of 12, an attack of 8, and our modulator, op 1, we have a hold time of 13, an attack of 6, and a decay of 16. I have the attack level below uh, the decay level, so I'm using the two stages to shape this. And it sounds like this. Now 
Now, since the harmonics in our timbre are going to decay faster and disappear sooner as we go up the keyboard, we need to have some time to key scaling in our modulator. So now when I've done that, back around middle C, we've kept the same characteristic to it, uh, but up high, we've lost that little delay at the beginning. So it's gotten too crisp. So what can we do to sort of balance this out? So what we're going to do is we're going to increase our hold time and decrease the attack and decays so that there's less change as we go up, meaning more of the delay will be in the fixed parameter, which is hold, less of that um, softening will be in the attack and decay. So let's go ahead and listen to this again. This is uh, the C3 range. And this is the uh, C5 range. So if we bring these guys down and lengthen this guy up down at C3, E3, and then back up here at E5 and C5. So you may be thinking, hey, well, if I put that to zero, it doesn't matter. The attack stays the same. But remember, in acoustic sounds, the higher pitches you play, the faster all the harmonics um, decay away, as well as the actual volume as well. So we need to have the time to key scaling in here to make the harmonic behavior of the decay and sustain uh, emulate our acoustic instrument, but we need the attack to stay consistent. So that's what necessitates tweaking the balance between your hold and attack times to get a perceptually consistent attack transient with the initial key on and still have the natural faster decay in the harmonics and volume as you play up the keyboard. So let's go back to review. Let's put the original envelope values in here. The time to key scaling. And then the adjustments needed to be made to make the attack the same, but the decay faster. And as I mentioned in the article, with so many harmonic components across so many parts, there's a lot of time spent getting these guys just right, tweaking it up and down two and three values to make sure our piano plays really nice up and down the range and all the harmonic components have the right feel. So now let's go take a look at the other example I mentioned in the article, which is our bowed piano sound. What I've done in this sound is altered all the envelope shapes. So instead of a hammer hitting our piano strings to get them to sound, we're using a bow as you would on a cello or violin. And it sounds like this. So since all these elements are synthesized in the various harmonic components of our sound, we can actually totally tweak them in a way that you can't do even if you just change your envelopes of your attack EG or your filter EG in a piano sample. And this is all real-time controllable, so if you see if we go in here and we reset these guys all to their zero values, we're going to get back our original piano sound. So that's a very simple yet very powerful change we can make. I also mentioned in the article another change to these parameters you can make from the panel that will turn this into sort of a harpsichord sound. So I made edits of the release of minus 10, sustain plus 22, decay plus 4, attack minus 1, the uh, filter EG depth minus 37, the resonance uh, plus 12, and the cutoff plus 47. And now our sound sounds like this. So now it's very harpsichord-esque. So that wraps up this video talking about envelopes in our harmonic component modeled piano sound. Make sure you play the performances in the live set that are the upright style ones, which are the uh, Beetle Clone, Hey Bulldog, and Martha My Dear uh, patches, along with the Electric Grand and the old 
uprights, where I programmed in very different envelope transients and attacks to make them sound much more like the uh, shorter stringed type of pianos. Until next time, hope you found this useful.